Today, it's all about keeping the vampires away. Hi folks, it's Darcy from The Purposeful Pantry. Today, we're gonna learn about dehydrating garlic. I'm gonna show you a quick hack on how to do this a little faster, and we're gonna come up with the best tasting garlic powder you've ever had. Okay, to get it started, I'm gonna talk about uh, how to do this and my cheat, okay? You can take all the cloves of garlic, and if you grow your own garlic, or if you get a great deal on uh, whole heads of garlic, you know, it's easy to do that. It's in, it takes you a little time. I'm not going to go through all of the hacks about uh, peeling garlic the best way because there are way too many videos on YouTube and tutorials on the web to show you how to do that. I'm still pretty old school. Um, I just sit and pick these apart. All right, a quick hack for what I am going to do today is I don't bother peeling the cloves, okay? I use them because everything is going right to powder. But as far as the, the each of the cloves go from the heads, I just do a whole. When I put them in my food processor, I do it all with the with the peel and the clove itself, okay? So what I also have is a jar of minced onions, I mean, minced onions, minced garlic that is in water. You do not want to do this if this is oil, because you can't. Uh, you can do it, uh, but you're going to have a mess. It won't be shelf stable. Uh, it won't make a good powder at all. So what I do is I empty this into a strainer on top of a bowl. I'll get the rest of that out in a minute. Let's just set that aside for now. Okay, so what I have here, all of these minced garlic bits. So if you're looking at creating a ton of dried garlic all at once with very little effort, this is the way to go. It's not the cheapest thing because you're having to buy something that's already been processed. Because all of the work has been done for you, this is all that's left. Um, and you can do so much so fast with a few jars of this stuff. I think I'll have to, I'll put the price here, but I think I didn't pay very much for these considering what I don't have to do because my time is also worth money. Um, and I, I look at that more and more as I'm trying to process faster to fill my, my pantry. We always want to be able to do things from scratch, from as far down as scratch as we can, so that we're not so reliant on a grocery store. But I can't grow my own garlic. Well, I can. I don't grow my own garlic right now. Um, I certainly don't grow, grow it in the quantity that I use throughout the year. So in the preservation meth process, I want to make sure that if I need it fast and I need a lot of it, that this is what I'll do. I'll take what I can to, to save myself the time so that I can do more. Then also, another hack if you're trying to do this quickly is to buy pre-peeled garlic. But I found this at a local grocery. Uh, they had giant trays of it already peeled, ready to go. Um, and so I take advantage of that as well. The time that it would have taken uh, when I could be doing other things because I have a ton of stuff lined up right behind this to go into the dehydrators So this is what I choose to do for bulk drying Okay, if you're gonna dry a little bit that's different, but when I'm doing bulk if I can get helps like this, I'll take them Okay, so that you know what we're working with I'm going to do this minced I'm gonna do a few of these uh, of these cloves as sliced uh, then I'm gonna do the bulk of these uh, in the food processor to chop them up some because that's how I would prefer them being is chopped. This is eventually, most of this is going to be a powder or at least it's going to be stored dried in order to make it powder later. I don't powder all of my garlic at once. I powder it as I need it because I don't, I want to keep it whole as long as I can because it stores longer. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to take my minced garlic that I already have and this is going to stay just as minced so I can just plop this into a soup or stew or casserole or whatever and it will rehydrate on its own during that process. I don't need to do much with it. So this is uh, the easy the easy way for me to have dried minced garlic all the time. So I am using uh, fruit leather sheets on my tray. Uh, yes, this is stained. Stained uh, fruit leather sheets are a sign of a well-loved dehydrator, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take a big tablespoon of this, I'm gonna spread it out. And the reason I'm not, the reason I'm not just using mesh in this is that this will uh, shrink up some and it will just go through the, the holes in the mesh. And so I want to do, uh, to try to keep it all in one place. So I'll spread it out the best I can. It's not gonna be perfect. But what I will do is I will come in through uh, every couple hours and just make sure that it's stirred up if it needs to be. Okay, 
So to show you how this works, I'm gonna take a bunch of these cloves and I'm going to slice them up. Some people like to keep slices of garlic uh, to powder. They also like to keep slices of garlic to do whatever else they wanna do with it. Um, so all you need to do is just take your garlic and you can do it either way. You can either slice it this way, slice it very thin, as thin as you can get it. The thinner the slice, the faster it's going to dry. Take the time to slice any of your food at the optimal slice. Most vegetables and most fruit is about a quarter of an inch, uh, but like with the garlic, it's really dense. So the thinner you can get it, the better. Or if you prefer, you can do long, wide slices like that, okay? Either way works just fine, it does not matter. Okay, I'm taking my my heads and I'm breaking them off. I didn't want to do this just all on camera because you don't need to watch me do it all. Now, if I have some older ones and I'm taking the paper off, I might find that this peel uh, comes off really easily. And if it does, it's fine to remove it. But what I'm doing is I'm taking them straight into the, pro the, the food processor because I don't need to get rid of the peel but this does take time. So I'm just gonna do just this amount for today. And I'm gonna put all of the rest of my cloves in there. All right, so I'm gonna take my food processor. So now that I've gotten all this done, I'm turn my power on and I am just going to pulse. You don't have to be perfect about spreading this out. Do the best you can. You can always come through here after an hour or two as things start to shrink up some uh, and just use your fingers and move it around. Um, I'm gonna smell quite garlicky today and I'm okay with that. So keep the vampires away. All right, here we go. These are trays of the minced garlic. Okay, this is my tray of roasted garlic. All I did before when I took them off the tray is I smashed them down a little bit then put them in here because I want to make sure I'm breaking that skin. Then this is my sliced garlic, and this is the commercially done minced garlic. Uh, that does look a little um, thick, but it's okay. I can always come through here, and just like with my fingers just now, just go through and do that. Okay, we're going to let this go. Now, typically, I would dry this pretty low. I want to keep all of my um, flavor in the garlic, and I don't dry it very high, but you can dry it from 125 um, today at 100. Now, we're going to stay right about 110, okay? My time does not matter. I don't do this by time. I want to make sure that it dries. I come and check it often. The timer only tells me when the time has come off. So, here we go. Normally you would do this at 125 for vegetables. Then we go to turning it on and just letting it run. All right, here we go. So these are our minced bits, the ones that came out of the jar. Okay, that's what they look like. These are our slices. So up close, come on, focus. Focus on my finger. Sorry, I'll get a better shot of that in a minute. Uh, these are the slices completely dried. They will snap just like that. Here are more of the jarred bits. And then these are the, uh, these are the ones I did in the food processor. So these are the rough chops that I just did the whole thing. And you can see there are the peels. Now your choice, you know, you can pick all these out if you want. I just leave them in because I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. And then more drunk. And then this is more of the rough chop. Okay, so let's get started on what you do next. 
Now, sometimes you might find out that your garlic uh, turns a kind of funky color, like maybe blue or green in this process. Typically, that's an enzymatic process that uh, some of the compounds in it will change color when it's introduced to acid uh, in cooking. And usually that's with like older garlic, but it may also happen with your dehydrating um, and it's fine. It's just, it could be that you're using some really old garlic. Uh, it could be a number of things, but when it turns a specific color like green or blue, it's fine. It's just the enzymes and the sulfurs on the inside doing funky stuff. So what do we do next, folks? It's time to condition. All right, so what I'm going to do is that these are all going to be used a little differently. And today I'm going to be grinding the stuff that came in a jar. And I'm not going to condition this because there are a couple of caveats why. Not in the least is my experience in drying things. I know when things are really dry compared to uh, maybe not being sure if it really dried or not. And when I'm going straight to a powder with something that's been drying for a couple of days, which this has, because I wanted it really good and dry. This took approximately, because, of the, because it was so wet starting out, this took about 14 to 18 hours. I didn't track exactly, but it took a good long time because it was so wet going on to here. The slices and the, um, the rough chop took less time. But because I knew this was really wet starting, I just let it go. So I let all of this dry for two straight days. One, because um, it was needing that dryness. Two, because it was raining uh, during the time or it was getting ready to, it was really muggy. And then three, because I just needed it really dry. Yes, I wasted some electricity. Yes, it cost me about 50 extra cents to dry this than it would have if I'd taken it out the first day. Um, but it also left me with the ability to powder this right away. I'm still gonna condition the powder because you never wanna just walk away from conditioning one side or the other. But let me tell you, if you're brand new to dehydrating, do the conditioning step first. It's really gonna be, you're gonna thank me that you get in that habit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, um, pre-minced um, jarred stuff and I'm going to go ahead and put it in my grinding jar because that's the one that's going to get done first. So the rest of this is going to be for storage because you don't want to do all of your grinding of garlic uh, all at once. You want to grind only what you're going to need for the next month or two and let the rest store as whole as you can up on the shelf because it will give you a better quality garlic powder down the road. Uh, less clumping will occur with all of it so that you have to keep processing through it um, and it's just better for long-term storage to go ahead and keep things as whole as you can. Now, as far as the slices and the and the uh, rough chop, I'm going to put them in the same jar because their eventual demise is going to be the same in this grinder. So I'm not going to bother keeping them separate. Okay. Right here. All right, for conditioning. Everything goes into the jar. You need to have some room to be able to make it, let it move. This will have some. You're gonna put a tight fitting lid and this is all you do. You do not add oxygen absorbers. You do not add moisture absorbers. You have this jar that you let move around for a whole week, five to seven days. Okay, that's all you need. So during the course of that time, you're gonna be looking for things that stick to the side of the jar and don't easily come off. Um, you're going to look for clumps of things forming together that they don't separate on their own. You're going to be looking for any kind of moisture buildup on the side, and you're going to be looking for mold. Those are the things that we're doing for conditioning. If you see any moisture at all, you put all of this back into your dehydrator. Any form of clumping that is not um, easily separated when you shake, because sometimes compression, the stuff at the bottom will clump a little bit more, and as long as you shake it up and it, and it comes apart easily, then you're fine. Uh, if you see pieces, if you see groups of things clumping together, then throw the whole thing back in the dehydrator, give it a few more hours, and then try it again. The minute you see mold, you're done. This has to be thrown away. Because while mold may form here, it's ten, uh, it may be forming colonies in other parts of your food, and you don't want to use it. For safest food handling, that's what you do. Okay, so for a week, we're going to do this, okay? Every day, just like that. Now... We're going to go ahead and move on to the part that I already said that I was going to powder. Basically, we're going to stick this in my bullet blender because I think it works best when I'm doing things that are more 
uh, that I've got more volume. I could do this in a coffee grinder. Um, what I don't want to do is this in a big blender because you've got too little product for too large of a space and it'll take longer to grind. And you're, the more you grind this, the more you process it, the more it's going to clump. And then also, um, I don't want to do that much powder because I want to keep the powder down to what I'm going to use in the next couple of months, not what I'm going to use in the next year. That's why I store it whole. Powdering is for immediate use. In the dehydrating group that I get asked a lot or that we find a lot of people, they talk about how they ground things and as they're grinding, it just gets in one big clump. That could be one, because it wasn't dry, they didn't condition it, they weren't sure that it was dry and it clumped during that because there was some moisture left. The other issue is with over-processing of your powders. When you're going into a coffee grinder or a bullet blender, you need to pulse it, not just grind it hard. So what I usually do is I pulse maybe I don't know, five to 10 times and just let it work itself down so that by the time you go for the good grind, you're not having to run that for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, trying to get that good grind. One, it makes everything start um, expanding from heat, which causes clumping. And because of heat, it draws out moisture. Moisture can be a problem. Two, it can ruin your grinder. Whatever you're using, you don't want to max out this, this motor because it's not meant for that kind of long-term work especially for the smaller ones, okay? So here we go. As you can tell, well, you can't tell because I'm gonna run this really fast so that you don't have to wait through all that. What I did was a lot of short pulses. So it gave it time to just break up all of those large pieces. Then by the time I could tell from here that I didn't see large pieces anymore, then I gave it some a little longer each repetition to grind a little finer. So took maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds, maybe the most. Mmm, garlicky. So I am going to measure this because I can tell you four ounces, uh, just shy of two thirds of a cup of powder. Okay. So that whole jar that you saw in the beginning came down to about two thirds of a cup of powder and that is homemade garlic powder. So you would use this in any recipe just as what it would call for. If you, if it asks for a tablespoon of powder, then you would use a tablespoon of this. It's the same thing as what you buy from the store. Now for the last little bit, what I want to show you is that this is the very last of a commercial jar that I got from Costco, um, that, um, back when we were trying to get as much stock as we could in, in the house uh, back in those days you remember so this is the last of that bigger bottle of garlic powder now their powder is obviously much finer than mine is because they have a commercial process that works through that um, but i just wanted to show you the difference in color how you can see how mine is just not quite as fine uh, and that's okay because it doesn't matter there's very little that you would need super super ultra fine powder in the way that you would need it in here. Now, this is also probably has, uh, because it is commercial, I think they probably have a lot of uh, clumping agents in that, that when they're grinding it all together, it also helps. So, when we're talking about clumping with storage, let's talk about arrowroot powder. Okay, you can't have a Darcy video without a mess because I think if I ever made a video that went straight through and I never made a mess, nobody would believe that it was really my video or that I edited it so heavily that you couldn't see it. But as I was pouring, uh, the garlic powder into my jar a little bit of it just went and um it made a big jump so okay so we're just going to leave this here because i can't be fussed about the rest of this okay so i have here is a pint jar uh, of garlic so it's just a little more than half that was that whole jar of minced garlic from walmart that i got okay so this is what it came down to uh is just barely more than half of a pint jar and for our process today, I'm gonna to use an old lid and an old lid to, to cover this. What I sometimes do with my extra canning jars that I can't use um, and to reuse lids that came from commercial jars that don't, that might not be airtight or I wanna make sure they're good and airtight, I will go ahead and use an old lid and a commercial lid and that way as it goes on, it forms that airtight seal, okay? So while your lid may not be airtight, you can do this to kind of hack that system. Okay, so let's talk about clumping. Two actions that would happen here. 
Um, your powder may be just fine and it may never clump ever. And as long as you're not opening this over the stovetop where you've got all of that steam coming up from your, uh, your dishes, this may be, work just fine for you. The minute you open something like this over that steam, that steam is getting introduced into your powder, it's going to clump, okay? Leaving this in a container that, has, that doesn't have an airtight seal uh, means it's going to absorb moisture and it's going to clump. Opening it, shutting it, opening it, shutting it, opening it, and shutting it during the day, during all the time that you use it, introduces more moisture into the jar, which means it's going to clump. Garlic, onion powder, um, those are pretty, uh, any kind of fruit powders um, are typical of getting really, really um, clumpy like that. So here are a couple things that you can do. Okay, first you can take your garlic powder, okay, just like this. And you can see how just in putting it into the jar right there, you've got this little clump. That doesn't mean that it's it's wet, it just means that compression makes this clump naturally. That's not the same kind of clumping I'm talking about when you have this stuck together makes it a rock. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I will spread this out onto a lined cookie sheet. So I just use one of my tray liners and put this in. You can use your Silpat, you know, Silpat sheets, whatever. Now what happens is that this is, goes into a warmed oven. I set the oven temperature at my lowest temperature, which at mine is 170 F. Then I let it heat, then I turn it off. Then I'm gonna set this into the oven for about 15 minutes and just let it dry. It's just a precaution. It's kind of like conditioning your food. And um, when you dry it, this is kind of like conditioning your powder. You're making sure that there's nothing left in it. You're drying out whatever you might have introduced into it. So then when it comes out, you might find that the top is kind of crusty. Like you might look at it and go, it's kind of, it's, it's, why is it clumping? And it's not. When you do this, it will come and clump right away. Okay. So that's, that's a thing that you don't need to worry about. All right. And then when you're done with that, then you just take your powder and, and put it into the container that you plan on storing it. Now we're going to do this without making a mess. Look at that. Woohoo. No mess. All right. So here we go. You're ready to store your garlic powder. You have a couple of options. You can leave it like it is now. And like I said, don't open this over steam. Uh, try not to leave it open all the time. Make sure it's in an airtight con container. You have this option, which is using a moisture absorber. You just plop one right in the top, put your lid on, and you are good to go. That moisture absorber will work at whatever moisture is introduced into the jar. Every time you open it, it will deal with it. Now, it doesn't mean that this is never going to clump, um, but it means that that's one of the best ways that you can do to make sure that the jar stays unclumped while you use it. And that's why you don't use uh, a giant jar of powder um, because you don't want to clump all of that up and then have to reprocess it. Now, another option is using arrowroot powder. This is like cornstarch, but it's not. It's made from a root, and I like using it better than cornstarch. It leaves no taste at all, and, and it's just something I prefer using. So what I would do is I would start out with about a quarter of a teaspoon in my jar, okay? Then I would close it up, and yes, you can use it with moisture absorber as well. I would close it up, and I will shake the jar up. And immediately, it has changed the color of of the powder and it looks more like the, the powder that we got commercially than originally. So we're gonna shake this up and what that arrowroot powder does is it works as an anti-clumping agent. It actually does absorb a little moisture and it helps keep your powder from clumping up. Now, if you need more, then you can add a full teaspoon. But I start out only adding a little bit at a time because I don't wanna add a ton there and then find out that I put too much in. Because what happens is, is that arrowroot powder can act as a thickener in something that you put it in. Garlic powder is different than a lot of other ones. You know that you can have garlic powder that you open and you can tell immediately what it is that you've had for maybe a year or two. Okay, this is about 18 months, okay? That's the last of that giant jar that we got. Um, and it has almost no smell. So this is, like if I were to open this and smell it, I could not tell you that this was garlic powder. I only know it is because the, the bottle says it. Because powders just don't last, um, which is why I tell you, only you have about six to nine months of this garlic powder uh, being good. Um, over time, they start to lose their, their essential oils, which gives the smell. You start to lose the nutrients. It starts to break down. So keep your powders for six to nine months. This can last for up to a year or two. 
which is why I store in, in this way. This is better than store-bought any day. And I can tell you, the minute that I brought this home from Costco, uh, this intensity is still way better and way more flavorful than this would have ever been coming from a grocery store. So, garlic powder, if you want to learn how to do other basic pantry staples uh, that you do from your dehydrator, I'll leave you a list right here. Um, and then, uh, I hope that you have a great week. And I'll see you next time. Until then, happy dehydrating.